jumping on the bandwagon. We've all heard of this idiom. Pakistan has jumped on and off many bandwagons. And something similar happened yesterday. Pakistan jumped on a bandwagon without even knowing the song it was playing. It ended up embarrassed as always. We're talking about a hashtag that was trending in Pakistan yesterday. Hashtag boycott UAE, United Arab Emirates. Why? Are the Emirates sending Pakistani expats back yet? Not really. Then why do Pakistanis want to boycott the UAE? Because Turkey said so. Pakistani Twitter users jumped on Turkey's bandwagon to trend this hashtag. It's a bit complicated. Let me put it simply for you and give you a bit of background. Turkey and the UAE have been at loggerheads over Libya, an oil-rich, war-torn country that both want to influence. So it's Turkey versus the UAE. The standoff went online. Trends began, hashtags began. Now some of the creative ones began highlighting the strengthening relationship between India and the UAE. The hashtag soon reached Pakistan, it had to. Now Pakistani netizens did not really understand the trend very much. All they saw was that this trend mentioned India. UAE is India's friend, so it must be boycotted. They unleashed a tweet storm. Pakistan's keyboard warriors ensured that hashtag boycott UAE becomes the top trend. What they forgot was their own government's outstanding debts to the UAE. Pakistan owes billions of dollars to the United Arab Emirates. Time and again, it has sought financial assistance packages from this kingdom. The visuals on your screens tell you a story. This Gulf nation has been one of the main avenues for Pakistan to seek bailouts, besides China, of course. No wonder the Prime Minister plays chauffeur. A fact that has now turned into a national embarrassment for Pakistan. Thanks to Turkey, a series of reality checks were given by social media influencers in Pakistan. Reality checks about how those trending this hashtag will themselves not be able to repay this debt even if they sell their kidneys. We are not saying this, the Pakistanis are. It's a debt which the Pakistan government too will find hard to pay, no matter how many embassy buildings it sells. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. A story of how deep the rot runs in Pakistan. A couple of years back, Pakistan foreign ministry officials sold their embassy buildings in Jakarta and Tokyo. These officials received kickbacks. The National Accountability Bureau of Pakistan has now revived a corruption case against these officials. Let me repeat that. The Pakistan Foreign Ministry is fighting an embezzlement case within Pakistan. And no, this is not the only Pakistani ministry accused of scams. Even the Health Ministry has been accused of corruption. A health minister, to be precise. Remember Dr. Zafar Mirza, the special assistant to Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan on health. The man who once reportedly smuggled 20 million masks out of Pakistan. Imran Khan has finally decided to curtail his authority, the authority to make financial decisions. Because there's been another scam. This time, in the import of vitamin tablets. So Mr. Zafar Mirza has been instructed to send all summaries involving any financial matters to the Prime Minister henceforth. But he won't be fired. Imran Khan, you see, is only adjusting corruption. He's not quashing it. This was his, his rallying political call as an opposition leader, fighting graft. The Naya Pakistan remains mired in old ways, though. Pakistan's own house is in a mess. Pakistan's keyboard warriors keep kick, kicking up more mess. And what does the government of Pakistan do? It only blesses this glorious mess. Thank <laughs> you.